Okay, welcome, Pahrump. I'm Dr. Michael Reiner of the Independent uh, Medical Doctors, uh, Pahrump, which is the TV show we're running on Monday night. Uh, this tonight is a little abbreviated uh, show. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed watching uh, Cash Cab. I think that is a, uh, a great show. I enjoyed it myself. I never had much time to watch it. Anyway, uh, I wanted to finish up the uh, cholesterol discussion for about 15 minutes, uh, and then I wanted to talk about um, a kind of a uh, medical political situation. Um, and I have Vern with me on the on the set for the last 15 minutes, or if he has any questions about cholesterol, uh, and I wanted to to do that on the last 15 minutes. And you know, I always uh, never short at keeping my uh, political comments. Uh, myself I always like to publicly make them this is a uh, live show so if you do want to call in if you have any questions that phone number is 727 8750 and I do encourage you to call in uh, so let's go to that one of the slides that I was talking about last uh, week and I'm hoping that you can see that on the sh on the screen but if not um, the, the myth was that eating cholesterol raises your cholesterol levels in your blood and briefly, I want to say much of the cholesterol that's found in food can't be absorbed by bodies. It is in some cases, uh, but it dispels that, that, that myth that eating eggs and eating foods that are thought to be high in cholesterol raise your cholesterol. That is absolutely not the case. Uh, so again, don't hesitate to eat those eggs. In a previous slide, we talked about choline, some important vitamins and things of that nature that you're missing out on, uh, and it will not raise your cholesterol. The next one is that the body does regulate the amount of cholesterol that you do make. So uh, with that being said, uh, you maintain the same ratio, which is what I put on the bottom part of that slide. So if I had a patient that had a cholesterol of 220 and I gave them a cholesterol-lowering medication, they would maintain the same ratio. If they dropped their cholesterol 20 points, they would drop their HDL, the appropriate amount. And there's another slide, and we'll talk about that later. Um, in addition, I wanted to make a, a comment about plants. Plants make a substance called phytosterols. Uh, they are in the intestinal tract. They actually are absorbed, and when they're absorbed, they actually interfere uh, with the absorption of uh, what little cholesterol that does get absorbed. Uh, so that's why it's very important to be eating uh, plant and plant-like substances when you are eating um, maybe that steak or, or things of that nature. Um, but again, there are better choices. So remember it, it is we are what we eat okay going to the next slide um, I wanted to uh, talk about um, that cholesterol in uh, that's in our body uh, is not basically soluble in the blood so that's why you very little cholesterol in your diet gets into your body uh, it's basically uh, carried around in proteins called lipoproteins and for those of you who have gone to the doctor who talked about different ratios there is the HDL which is a high density lipoprotein this is a scavenger lipoprotein it actually picks up cholesterol in the periphery and prevents it from being deposited into your arterial walls and other tissues. This is a very important cholesterol um, and your doctor may discuss that at some point. Exercise raises HDL, alcohol raises HDL, um, and with that being said, that's not an excuse to drink. It's basically to know that um, regular intake of alcohol does raise HDL. Um, and keep in mind, alcohol by nature is pure sugar. So if you are drinking alcohol, uh, you will uh, raise your blood sugar uh, and you will again predispose yourself to diabetes. So uh, keep that all in mind, everything in moderation. When is I talk whiskey about... Too? What? Whiskey too? Whiskey, yes. Whiskey as well? Whiskey. Just beer or, or is it? It's two beers uh, a day, uh, two glasses of wine or one shot of whiskey. So the people out there that drink a lot of wine is drinking a lot of sugar? Yes. Oh, all right. Yeah. So uh, you have to keep those caloric contents in place when you're uh, remembering that, that that's the case. Um, in addition to, uh, if we go back to the slide, I want to talk about um, that one other comment on there, which is that the low-density lipoprotein is basically what carries our bad cholesterol in our body. Um, and it is a number that we are concerned about more than anything else. When you go to a cardiologist, they're going to talk about your LDL and what your risk ratio is. They don't really 
assign much risk rates go to HDL. Uh, they talk about LDL. Let me tell you a couple of numbers. 100 here, they talk about 100 being a number that is good for non-cardiovascular patients, meaning if you have not had a cardiovascular event in your life and you want to get into cardiovascular protection, your LDL should be 100 or less. If you've had an event, such as an MI or a stent, anything that causes you to have a diagnosis of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, then your LDL should be around 70, and that would be the target where they have seen better reduction in recurrent events and um, all-cause mortality with, with cardiac events. So. Um, Keep in mind that your body does need cholesterol, so the numbers need to be 125 total or greater and certainly uh, between 70 on your bad cholesterol. The next number is VLDL, which is called very low density lipoprotein, uh, and this is a, a real transient factor in our body, usually high after you eat, but is not considered part of those risk ratio numbers that we'll talk about. Uh, on the next slide, I'm gonna show you some calculations that we do to talk about uh, cholesterol. And um, so these ratios are listed as follow. Uh, your total cholesterol to your HDL cholesterol. And that is basically, um, we take your total cholesterol, we divide it by your HDL, and that ratio uh, is about 4.5 is the cutoff for uh, a good bad ratio. Um, if you are under four, you're in, you're protected. Three is much better. Um, anything greater than that puts you at a higher cholesterol risk. The other number is the LDL to HDL ratio. That is the bad cholesterol to the good. So if you have a 3.5 or one greater ratio there, then you are in a bad situation. And the next number is what we call our free cholesterol. And what you do there is you take your total cholesterol minus your HDL. So we could look at a few numbers and decide if you had a total cholesterol of 200, but you had an HDL of 30, your ratio would be seven to one. So, and that is a very high ratio. Um, there's also some numbers regards to HDL. Anybody who has an HDL of 75 or greater, according to a Boston Framingham study, which looked at a town's natural progression of heart disease, uh, was a was a protective uh, factor for your, your heart disease. So if you have an HDL of 75 or greater, usually in most cases, the doctors are not too eager uh, to lower your cholesterol. Uh, they usually consider that a positive thing. Uh, going to the uh, next slide, this is a slide I really wanted to talk about last time, the next last time. This is basically my own diagram of what happens to your cholesterol when you are a diabetic. And this again tries to tie in some of what I've been talking about for a long time. Um, I kind of put this as in a, the non-diabetic lipoprotein, which you can see is that square and it has eight particles in there. That would, I use it as what I call the LDL town car. Um, a town car is a Lincoln. It can hold eight people, maybe more if you cram them in there. But the point being is that the car is the Lincoln, which is the black box, and the passengers are the cholesterol particles, or those are the red circles. Um, and this would be a non-diabetic who basically uh, has a whatever the number is, and, and this is how the cholesterol is carried around in a non-diabetic person. Uh, when you become a diabetic, or if you have an elevated blood sugar, you make more LDL proteins, lipoproteins, and so I call them fiats. Um, and you can see that this ratio of about four to one is really hypothetical. It's different for every individual person. Suffice to say, it's just a diagram to show you that when you are poor with your carbohydrate diet, if you are pre-diabetic or diabetic, this is why you have such a high risk for heart disease. And what I'm, what I'm trying to get the point across is um, more important than your diet, more important than the fat you eat, more important than anything else is to control your sugars. Get on a low carbohydrate diet. Car low carbohydrate diets do reduce weight. Um, anybody who's been on a diet that's done well has been on a low carb diet. When they lose weight, 
They help a lot of other factors related to cardiovascular risk, which are basically blood pressure, which are uh, obesity leading to sleep apnea, to a bunch of other conditionings. When you lose weight, you feel better, you're more active, your body doesn't hurt so much. So there's everything becomes positive from that. Um, we had a caller in last week that talked about a vegan diet. Um, vegan diets are fine. Anything that reduces your carbohydrate intake and anything that reduces uh, and increases your plant um, and your vegetables above the ground is always a good thing. So with that, I hope you um, understand what I'm trying to talk about, about reducing cholesterol particles, size, making your body back to the way it was when you were younger. Um, and, you know, it is important to, to, to eat right and um, basically take care of yourself. Um, Obamacare makes sure that uh, they may not be around, uh, medicine may not be around to take care of you if you're not taking care of yourself. So with that in mind, we do have that call in line 727-8750. We're going to go to break in a few minutes, but one of the things I wanted to talk about, which was this uh, political kind of medical thing that has nothing to do with Obamacare, um, and after the break we'll talk about it, but one of the pharmacies and independent pharmacies in town recently closed, uh, Prump Valley Pharmacy. Um, and it was sad to me to, to hear that, um, and it was... Um, uh, one of those things where you had an independent pharmacist who was trying to make it into town and got closed down. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that and some of the other misconceptions that are going on in town with related to controlled substances in the pharmacy. So, Prompt, thank you for tuning in tonight. This is an abbreviated show. We'll be back with the second 15-minute uh, segment and my guest, Vern. Have a good night. We'll be back in just a minute.